This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It is 5 o'clock here on your Monday. Good morning to you. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick. Here's what's making headlines on this January the 13th. A local group is taking their concerns about violence straight to state lawmakers. Our Kelsey Anderson is working for you this morning with what Moms Demand Action wants lawmakers to do to stop gun violence. Plus, an iconic restaurant in Indianapolis went up in flames over the weekend. How the community is rallying around Country Kitchen and when the restaurant plans to reopen. And IPS is revealing its plans for three troubled schools currently run by the state. What the district wants to see happen with Emma Donnan Middle School and how and manual high schools. But first, we do need to get a check of your Storm Team 6 forecast. And I think everyone is ready to dry out from all the rain we got that started all over on Friday, last time we saw you guys. So Todd, is today the day? You know, it is going to be dry today for the most part. There's a little bit of patchy drizzle this morning, but nothing that's going to aggravate the flooding situation or cause you to have to carry the umbrella around throughout the day today. So it's good that it's dry. The bad news is we don't have much in the way of sunshine in the forecast, so you do not need to have your sunglasses is handy throughout the day today, nor the umbrella, but grab that medium weight jacket. Even with the clouds, temperatures today will still be running a little bit above normal. In fact, we're above normal already. 38 in Plainfield, 42 in New Pal, and it's 40 up in Noblesville as well, and Pendleton sitting at 39 degrees. So there's lots of clouds in place this morning. As I mentioned, a little bit of drizzle. Once you get into northern Indiana and extreme northern Indiana, basically right along the toll road, there is a winter weather advisory where there could be a little bit of freezing drizzle. So unless your travel plans take you into the northern part of the state, you should be just fine here this morning. Just don't think you're going to need those sunglasses or it's going to turn into a bright day while the clouds may thin a little bit as the day goes on. Overall, we're looking at mostly cloudy skies. And by this evening, 3, 4 o'clock, I'm hopeful for some sunshine. It's definitely not a guarantee, though. Uh, but what will be a guarantee is the above normal temperatures. Highs today are back up into the mid-40s. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Here is a look right now at our drive times. Maybe you're heading to the airport or dropping someone off as you're heading back from the airport to the downtown area. A quick 12 minute drive on eastbound I-70. No problems here for your commute. This is the live look up on the northeast side of town, I-69 and I-465. No problems here. A heads up to drivers right now, though, on the south side, I-465 at State Road 37. We just got word of a semi-fire blocking a few lanes of traffic. We're going to find that for you and break it down and let you know if you need to reroute. We begin this morning in Fort Wayne where an eight-year-old boy has life-threatening injuries after being shot. This happened early Sunday morning. We're told when officers arrived, they found the boy suffering from a gunshot wound to his shoulder and chest area. Investigators believe shots were fired from outside the home, but no suspects or motive have been identified. The case remains under investigation. Back here in Indianapolis, police are investigating a deadly shooting on the city's northwest side. Officers were called out to the Bastille Lane and Lafayette Villa's neighborhood around 3.30 Sunday morning. That's near 56th Street and Lafayette Road. When they arrived, officers found a man who appears to have been shot. He was pronounced dead there at the scene. We're still waiting to learn the victim's identity at this time. Homicide detectives are still investigating. With violence seemingly on the rise in the city and across the state, hundreds from the Moms Demand Action Advocacy Group gathering are gathering today at the State House for their annual Advocacy Day. Our Kelsey Anderson spoke with the local grandmother about what they hope comes from today. Kelsey, what did she have to say and why is this cause so close to her heart? Hey, good morning. So yeah, Moms Demand Action, they are expecting about 300 members to come out today to the State House to talk to lawmakers and let them know what these bills mean and why they're so important. So we spoke with a local member who says she joined the group about five years ago after a mass shooting. Since joining the group, since joining the group, Kathy Wyman learned gun violence is the number two killer among children in the United States. She says she doesn't want her grandchildren and her, her children, excuse me, and her her grandchildren to live in fear every day and she couldn't sit on the sidelines and wait for someone else to work to make changes. Whether I'm successful or not, whether our group is successful or not, or to what degree we're successful, only time will tell, but at least I can look at my grandchildren and say, I'm trying. Weinman says the group hopes to talk to lawmakers about bills related to gun laws before they come up in this legislative session. She says lawmakers see so many bills during this time, they want to make sure they understand the ins and outs of the bills they are voting for. 
So um, members of Moms Demand Action will be meeting today at the State Library at 930 before heading here to the State House at 1030. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. A Southwest Side church is fed up with being targeted by thieves. Since the summer, a number of air conditioning units have been stolen from West Morris Street Free Methodist Church. The church's pastor, Dr. Kristen Marvel, said the thieves also tried to steal parts off of a church van, but instead ended up just breaking pieces off of it and creating a bigger bill. Dr. Marvel says it's getting expensive to replace what's been taken or broken by crooks, but the worst part is the bad guys are actually hurting the neighborhood. We're spending a lot of time and money um, and attention and energy focused on um, you know, responding to all of this instead of being able to serve in the community, which is really what our heart is. The church says they have lights and cameras with motion detectors, but that doesn't seem to be stopping the thieves. If you or your community group is experiencing a problem and you don't know how to get it solved, connect with RTV6 and we'll see if there's anything we can do. Just call or send us an email at workingforyou at rtv6.com. It is 5.06. The doors will remain closed this week here at Country Kitchen. The Soul Food Restaurant has played host to politicians, celebrities, and delivered thousands of meals to hungry Hoosiers during the holiday season. The two alarm fire ripped through the restaurant Saturday morning. You can't tell the extent of the damage from the outside here, but we're told there is heavy damage inside and the stability of the building is compromised. Investigators believe that the fire started in a downstairs office area. Community members we spoke with say this loss is devastating. Our hearts go out, our prayers are up. I knew what their plans were, I talked to them about expanding and this may be fortuitous this may be uh just the push uh for something bigger the owners plan to meet with the insurance company today in a Facebook post. They thank everyone for the overwhelming support and words of comfort. They also promise to keep the community updated as they work to move forward. Indianapolis Public Schools is revealing its plan to take back control of three of its schools currently run by the state. On Wednesday, the State Board of Education will vote on whether or not it will return the three schools back over to IPS after a state takeover in 2012. Saturday, IPS announced its intentions for each school. On the south side, Emma Donnan Middle School will be run by either Phelan Leadership Academy or Adelante Charter Schools. Manual High School will be operated by Crystal House Academy. Academies. And on the east side, Howe High School will close its doors for the 2021 school year with potential plans to reuse the facility in the future. IPS leaders say this plan has been years in the making. A couple years ago, we closed three of our public high schools, merged from seven to four high schools. And we made a statement that if these high schools were returned to us, we were not going to reopen them as our high schools. How students grades 7 through 12 will receive guaranteed enrollment into one of several IPS schools, including Harshman Middle School and Henry W. Longfellow Medical STEM Middle School and the district's four IPS managed high schools. Students entering ninth grade for the 2021 school year can also attend Thrival India Academy, the district's study abroad program. Here at 509, let's take a look at what the bus stop is going to be like this morning, Todd. You know, as you walk out to the bus stop, you'll need to have the jacket for the kiddos as they head out and about, but you probably don't need the hat and gloves. It's a little chilly out there, but nothing terrible this morning. And we have been much, much colder. In fact, we're all above freezing this morning with temperatures uh, that are in the 30s. The skies are mostly cloudy. There's a little bit of patchy drizzle in spots this morning. It's so light, though, that radar can't even pick it up. But you do notice the clouds are firmly in place anywhere you go across the area. So don't uh, expect any sunshine here uh, this morning. I'm hopeful for a little bit of sunshine, though, later on uh, this afternoon. But all this significant precipitation, whether it's rain or snow that you see in Michigan, you see the direction that that's going. It's heading to the north. So even though we're locked in with the clouds for a good chunk of the day today, temperatures actually will be above normal. The normal high is 35. We'll be close to 50 today in Bloomington, 46 in Columbus. As you work your way to the north, a little bit cooler highs right around 40 degrees in Kokomo. Tomorrow we are back up into the 50s and then we stay there for Wednesday as well. More on that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. There's growing concern in Washington regarding President Trump's claim that the U.S. faced imminent danger from Iran. Why lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are now questioning that claim. 
And Prince William has broken his silence, speaking openly for the first time about the rift between him and Prince Harry. Hear what he had to say and how the royal family is forging ahead following last week's shocking announcement from the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. It's from 4.30 to 7.00. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says Democrats will determine when to send the formal impeachment charges against President Trump to the Senate Tuesday. But impeachment isn't the only issue the White House is dealing with this week. The fallout from the U.S. drone strike that killed a top Iranian official still lingers as questions remain over whether evidence shows an attack on the U.S. was imminent. John Lawrence reports. President Trump says Iranian General Qasem Soleimani posed an imminent threat to the U.S. because he was planning numerous attacks. I can reveal that I believe it would have been four embassies. But when Defense Secretary Mark Esper was asked about specific evidence regarding the imminent threat Soleimani allegedly posed. I didn't see one with regard to four embassies. As for National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien. I think those threats were imminent and uh, I don't want to get into the definition far, further than that, but uh, we, we took the measures necessary to protect American diplomats. Both Esper and O'Brien back President Trump's rationale for the fatal drone strike, but there's some bipartisan concern. I've learned not to simply take the federal government's word at face value. We've heard that the uh, from the Secretary of State that they don't know where or when, but it was imminent. That to me does seem inconsistent. Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut tweeting Friday that there was no mention of planned embassy attacks at last Wednesday's briefing, ending with there was no such imminent threat. Frankly, I think what they are doing is they are overstating and exaggerating what the intelligence shows. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Out in England, the British royal family will meet today to discuss future roles of Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan. The couple announced last week plans to step down as senior royals and to seek financial independence. According to the Sunday Times of London, Prince William has broken his silence, telling a friend that he is, quote, saddened by the decision, also saying, quote, all I can do is try and support them and hope that when the time comes, we're all singing from the same page, end quote. The brothers are expected to meet with the Queen and their father later this morning. Meghan, who is back in Canada is expected to join the conversation over the phone. In New Zealand, a 20th person has died following December's volcanic eruption. The victim is Paul Browett, an Australian tourist. He and his two daughters were caught in the December 9th eruption on White Island. Authorities say his wife stayed on their cruise ship while the rest of the family took a day trip to the island. The body of the couple's younger daughter was recovered, um, was among six recovered from the island in the days after the eruption. Their older daughter is still being treated for burns at an Australian hospital. Authorities say Paul died Sunday night. Of the 23 victims still hospitalized, at least five are in critical condition. At 516, some Green Bay Packers fans didn't get much sleep before Sunday's big game against the Seahawks. A dose of winter weather had the team calling on fans to help shovel out Lambeau Field. The Packers initially called for 700 volunteers, but cut the number in half when the forecast changed. Fans who answer the call say it's a different way to cheer on their team and a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be in Lambeau Field at sunrise. On top of the priceless experience, all shovelers received $12 an hour. The snow didn't slow the team down either. The Green Bay coming out with a win over the Seahawks to advance to the NFC title game. A lot of snow up there, Todd, and we got a lot of rain down here. Yeah, you know, thankfully we were on the warm side of everything here. Imagine if all that rain we saw was snow, there would be a lot of it out there. Uh, but unfortunately, we had the rain, which did lead to some flooding across the area, and there are still some flood warnings out there, so uh, be aware of that. So there's lots of clouds around throughout the morning hours today. I'm hopeful for a little bit of sunshine later on this afternoon, but the temperatures stay mild. We're going to be probably about 10 degrees above normal once again today, but more heavy rain is possible as we get towards the end of the week. And that is not the good news in this forecast as we go forward. Storm Team 6 radar quiet on this Monday morning. The clouds are in place. Any precipitations, nothing more than a little bit of patchy drizzle. And that is just about it. All the significant uh, precipitation is going to be well up to our north. The temperature uh, sits at 39 degrees right now. The winds are to the southwest. Those southwesterly winds going to help to bring our temperatures up into the mid-40s later on this afternoon. In fact, some of you are already 
in the 40s in Bloomington, as well as Connorsville and Bedford. Your temperatures hour by hour throughout the day today should be right around 38 degrees in the city by the noon hour, and then 44 to 46 degrees will be the afternoon high with skies that'll be mostly cloudy, but those clouds should thin just a little bit, I think, late in the afternoon. And then tomorrow, still mostly cloudy, but a little bit warmer. Tomorrow, we mark a return to the 50s across the area. In fact, should get up to right around 55 degrees. It looks like as we work our way into the day on Tuesday, we'll stay in the 50s on Wednesday with a few scattered showers around. And then as we go into Thursday, slightly cooler with partly to mostly cloudy skies. And then Friday's the day that a bigger storm system will impact the area. As it comes in on Friday, it does look like it could start as a little bit of a wintry mix Friday afternoon. I'm not too concerned about the wintry part of this system because it's bringing some mild air with it. So we'll quickly go over to all rain. But once the rain starts, has the potential Friday night into Saturday morning once again to be pretty heavy across the area. And then it could end as a little bit of snow once again on the back side of that system. Again, I'm not too concerned about the wintry aspect of it. The bigger concern is going to be the amount of rainfall and also the potential for flooding once again, as many areas could see another one to two inches of rain by the end of the week. Of course, plenty of time to fine tune that forecast. Uh, but since we've been dealing with a lot of rain and a lot of flooding, definitely want to make you aware of that if you live in some of those flood prone areas as early as possible. Behind that storm system, a little colder on Sunday, Lauren, with a high of 31. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Here's a look right now to our southwest. Southwest I-465 here in Man Road. You can see traffic in this area looks to be traveling up to speed, but just a heads up as you're traveling on that side of town, let's take a look at our traffic now maps. We do have reports right now of a semi-fire. This is in the eastbound lanes of I-465. It says it's near Man Road, but as you can see from that camera there, everything looks to be traveling up to speed. We're going to continue to keep an eye out for any delays in this area, but for right now, it looks like you should be good to go. A New Jersey woman says Amazon sent her a very gross and potentially health-threatening delivery. Nestle Sales said she ordered two boxes of diapers from the site's Amazon warehouse section. That's where open box and return items are sold at a discounted rate. But when the package arrived, some of the diapers appeared to be soiled. Picked up the diapers and it was a little bit heavy. I was half asleep, the lights were off. At that point, I turned on the light and that's when I noticed these diapers are neatly folded and they are soiled. I couldn't believe it. Sales said she immediately wiped down her 19-month-old daughter who is immune compromised and dis disinfected the nursery. The family hasn't had the substance tested but says it smells and looks like feces. In a statement, an Amazon spokesperson said, quote, we are investigating the situation and we are in contact with the customer to make it right. Well, this season's flu continues to hit children and young adults particularly hard. Straight ahead, what officials say is causing the spike in flu deaths among young people. The Publishers Clearing House Prize Patrol is gearing up for another big year of giveaways, but that means scammers are also out impersonating them. Coming up at 6 o'clock, our John Matteries tells us what you need to look out for so you don't waste your money. We'll be right back. Sounds. Two states have reported flu cases of pediatric flu deaths. Last week, a child in southwest Wisconsin and a child in Chicago, Illinois, died from complications related to the flu. According to the CDC, the unusual early dominance of the B strain of the influenza virus seems to have impacted children the hardest. So far, 32 pediatric flu deaths have been reported this season. That's twice as many reported at the same time last year. Here in Indiana, 22 flu deaths have been reported. All of those patients were over the age of 25. Doctors are are reminding people to get vaccinated. It is the best way to prevent the flu and its potentially serious complications. They also say it is not too late to get your flu vaccine. It is National Gluten-Free Day, and whether you're gluten-free or not, health experts say it is still a possibility you should explore. Gluten is a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. National Gluten-Free Day was first organized in 2014 to bring awareness to the upsides and hardships of a gluten-free diet, particularly for those with celiac disease, like myself, an autoimmune condition that damages the smaller intestine when gluten is consumed. You can participate by joining a gluten-free friend for a gluten-free meal and have them educate you on the lifestyle. Or if you're the gluten-free one, share a gluten-free meal or recipe with someone. 
At 525, a six-year-old Ohio boy gets a hero's welcome after beating cancer. You can see him right here. John Oliver Zippe, also known as J.O., received his final round of chemotherapy two days after Christmas, ending a three-year battle with leukemia. When he returned to school last week, his classmates greeted him with a standing ovation. J.O.'s parents say that the past three years weren't easy, but he never fell behind on his academics. So he had a metaport in his chest, so he wasn't uh, able to do any physical activity for three years. Uh, so it was hard for him. You know, he had to sit back, uh, gym class and things. Well, the celebration also included a school assembly showing a video montage of John Oliver's courageous battle. His parents say that he's happy to get back to school and to normal. He's looking forward to catching up with his friends. Way to go, J.O. Yeah, look at how cute Yay. he is. That's awesome. Good, Good news him. to start our week. All right. Weather-wise, not terrible. No, you know, there's lots of clouds around this morning, but it could be worse. Temperatures are above freezing this morning, and that's where they'll stay for your morning commute, so you don't have to worry about any icy spots out there. The skies are just going to be mostly cloudy this morning. Should thin the clouds a little bit for some sunshine this afternoon and temperatures will be above normal later on today. In fact, Bloomington, Columbus, mid to upper 40s across the area. About 46 in Indy, a little cooler to the north, but the normal high this time of year is 35. We have 50s returning tomorrow, but also down the road, the potential for a lot of rainfall. More on that coming up in the next half hour. Good morning, Indiana. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Today at 10 on RTV6. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Now at 5.30, a decision could be made today to determine the future of Owen Valley Fire Department, the dispute that has already caused the department to lose firefighters. And a local group is ready to rally at the State House to make their voices heard about gun violence, what they're pushing lawmakers to do about the ongoing issue. But first, here at 5.30, we want to get a check at our Monday forecast, the start of a new week. Yeah, we want to bring in Todd Clausen right now. Todd, what can we expect as we kick off the work week? You know, it's a pretty quiet start to our Monday, just what we want, right? No real weather issues to contend with as you take to the roadways. The skies are mostly cloudy. You obviously need the jacket with temperatures in the 30s and 40s, and your outdoor workout will be good to go. There's still kind of a damp feeling out there from all the rainfall that we saw Friday and then into the first half of the weekend, uh, but you do not need to have the umbrella handy for the day today as there's nothing more than just a little bit of patchy drizzle in spots, and that's mainly in northern locations here this morning, but the clouds, as you see, full in place here across all the central Indiana, and that's not going to change this morning. I am hopeful that the clouds do thin just a little bit heading into the afternoon hours uh, today for a little bit of sunshine, but any significant precipitation is making its way through the state of Michigan, and it is heading in a northerly direction. 30s and 40s here this morning, so everybody's above freezing. That's the good news with the moisture on the roadways. You shouldn't have any icy issues. 40 in Bloomington, 42 in Muncie, 36 is the current temperature up in the the Lafayette area. So here is the clouds through the first half of the day. Here's a little bit of sunshine added to the forecast later on this afternoon with temperatures that'll be climbing all the way up, Lauren, into the mid 40s. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Here is a live look right now at traffic to the southwest. You can see everything here is moving along up to speed at I-465 here and Man Road. We're going to continue to monitor this though because we have a report of a vehicle fire in the area. So this is something I'll, we'll keep our eyes on. Right now, it doesn't look to be slowing down traffic too much this morning. So so let's take a look at our traffic now map, planning out your drive coming in from the west side. This is eastbound I-74 starting in Brownsburg to State Road 267 here to I-465. A quick seven minute drive, so no delays. Taking you up to the northeast side, I-465 and I-69 at Binford Boulevard. Let's get a look from our in-dot traffic camera in that area. You can see everything is traveling up to speed. New overnight police are searching for the driver that crashed into an apartment complex, then left the scene. It happened just before three at the Mason Gardens Apartments. That's near 42nd and Post Road. Neighbors tell RTV6 a woman was sleeping on the other side of the wall where the car crashed through. Officers on scene tell us luckily no one was hurt. The future of a local fire department could be decided today. The Owen County Fire Territory Board is set to meet about a contract agreement with the Owen County, Owen Valley, excuse me, Fire Department. They met last month, but were unable to reach an agreement by the end of the year, causing them to lose firefighters. The group, mostly made up of volunteer firefighters, went over final business and set up a schedule to remove their belongings. 
Today's meeting is scheduled for 6 p.m. at the Owen Valley Fire Department. Fire officials say they are expecting a large public turnout. At 5.33, an investigation is underway after an early morning shooting along one of the busiest nightlife streets downtown this weekend. Indy Metro Police say that officers, uh, that a person was shot just after 2.30 a.m. on Sunday morning on Massachusetts Avenue near East Street. The victim there was taken to the hospital in stable condition. If you know anything about what happened here, you're urged to call police or call Crime Stoppers. State police are also investigating after a woman was shot inside her car on I-70. Police say it happened on the interstate near Keystone Avenue around 4 a.m. Saturday. The woman was hit in the leg when her car was shot at. State police and a SWAT team served two search warrants in connection to the shooting, but no arrests have been made. Detectives do not believe the shooting was random. This morning, police are still searching for multiple suspects accused of shooting two employees at a Lawrence restaurant. The attempted armed robbers ha robbery here happened just after 7 Saturday night at the Bando restaurant on Pendleton Pike. Police say the suspects entered the restaurant through a back door and then shot the employees. Authorities say the suspects were never in the same room as customers. The suspects fled south after the shooting and nothing was taken during the incident. The employees are expected to recover. A new bill is working to keep Indiana's polls open longer on Election Day. The bill, sponsored by Republican Representative Tim Wesco, would change Indiana's current closing time from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. He says Kentucky and Hawaii are the only states that also close that early. Supporters say the extension would boost Indiana's voting turnout. But county clerks say they're concerned that the change would make it more difficult to find enough poll workers. At 535 today, hundreds from the Moms Demand Action Advocacy Group will come together at the State House for their annual advocacy day. Our Kelsey Anderson spoke with one local grandmother about what she and these others hope come from today. Kelsey, what did she have to say and why? Why is this cause so close to her heart? Hey, good morning, Meredith. Yeah, so this cause is so important to her because she has grandchildren and children, and she wants to make sure that they feel safe in the state that they live in. So they're expecting 300 members today here at the State House from Moms Demand Action to talk to lawmakers and hope to end gun violence here in the Hoosier State. So that local member, she says that she joined the group about five years ago after a mass shooting. She said the first time she attended an advocacy, an advocacy day, they had just a couple dozen members show. Now their movement has grown and she hopes that lawmakers will take notice of their large group. Kathy Wyman says during the legislative session, lawmakers see so many bills and the group Moms Demand Action want to make sure they understand the ins and outs of the laws that they are for and against. As a group, we hope that the legislators are better informed on gun related issues and that we also provide for them um, a place to reach out if they have questions. We are our research data fact based grassroots movement. She says she joined the group because she couldn't just sit on the sidelines and wait for someone else to make changes. That's why they're coming out here today in hopes of getting in the ears of lawmakers and letting them know how important this is to them and other people around the Hoosier State. Now, members of Demo Moms Demand Action will be meeting at the State Library at 930 this morning and then coming here to the State House grounds at 1030. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. Meanwhile, IMPD has released gun violence data for the city for 2019. There are a total of 452 non-fatal gun violence incidents. That's up from 447 in the year 2018 and a total of 524 victims. That's up from 492 in the year 2018. In response to these statistics, IMPD Chief Randall Taylor released a statement saying in part, quote, while we are making progress in driving down overall crime, the number of families impacted by gun violence remains at an unacceptable level. We continue our holistic approach to addressing violence in our community, end quote. One woman is making history in central Indiana and her incredible journey shows how strength can turn grief into purpose. Lossie Davis is the city of Southport's first black woman appointed to the police department's command staff. She's been in law enforcement for more than three decades and is now assistant chief. After her son was murdered while attending a basketball camp in Tennessee, Davis formed Broken But Blessed Ministries, a grief and healing ministry and book club. Davis is using her peaceful point of view to promote better relationships between people in the community who may be at odds. One thing we have to learn how to do, we have to learn 
how to live and work together as brothers and sisters in this world because if we don't, we will perish as fools if we don't learn how to live together and work together in this life. Through her ministry work, Davis also wrote a book in memory of her son called God's Purpose for My Pain. She's also the first lady of Ambassador Baptist Church. You can learn more about her inspiring story on the RTV6 app. Here at 539, let's get a check of what the weather's like out right now. Yeah, as you walk out the door, it's pretty quiet out there. Still really that damp feel. There's a lot of rainfall, as you all know, on Friday into Saturday. And so the ground is completely saturated, so it releases that. And that's why there's that damp feel currently, but we have no additional precipitation here this morning. As the kids head off to school, the temperature is averaging right around 35 to 36 degrees in most locations. As the kids come home from school, a little bit of sunshine works in, uh, but overall, a mostly cloudy day for us with a temperature that's up to 46 degrees. That does put us back above normal, which is the good news. Any significant precipitation still to our north, we're just locked in with the gray skies this morning. And again, I'm hopeful that the clouds will thin just a little bit later on this afternoon. Afternoon. But looking forward in this forecast, tomorrow is still dry. No chance of any rain. Wednesday, we bring some scattered showers in. So Wednesday's the day you probably need to have the umbrella handy. Thursday's dry, and then we really ramp up the rain chances again on Friday. Friday's storm system is a pretty big one. We're again going to be on the warm side of things, so it's mainly rain. Could start off as a brief wintry mix, but flooding will be a concern once again by the time we get to next weekend. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. Thank Thousands of Iranian protesters angry at their government after it accidentally shot down a Ukrainian passenger plane. Coming up, the words of support President Trump is offering to those who are outraged. And thousands in the Philippines are being evacuated after a volcanic eruption near the capital city. Still ahead, why experts believe an extreme eruption is still to come. It's 540. We'll be right back. Advanced Repair Lotion for healthier looking skin. Protests in Iran are mounting after the country's leaders admitted to accidentally shooting down a Ukrainian passenger plane. President Trump offering support to the Iranian people as questions continue to linger about the drone strike against Qasem Soleimani. ABC's Megan Tevrazian has the latest. Thousands of protesters on the streets of Iran shouting anti-government slogans after the Revolutionary Guard's admission that it accidentally shot down that Ukrainian passenger plane, mistaking it for a missile, killing all 176 people on board. Just last week, Iranians were united, protesting the U.S. after the killing of Qasem Soleimani. Now, Iran's unity weakened in a sudden reversal. Protesters tearing down posters of the slain leader. President Trump offering support to the Iranian people, tweeting in Farsi and in English, my administration will continue to stand with you. And later sending a tweet aimed at the leaders in Iran. Do not kill your protesters. The world is watching. More importantly, the USA is watching. Turn your internet back on and let reporters roam free. Stop the killing of your great Iranian people. Here at home, Trump insisting Qasem Soleimani was planning attacks against American embassies before he was killed in that drone strike. That but Defense Secretary Mark Esper assessment. was asked on CBS if there was specific evidence of an imminent threat. One? I didn't see one with regard to four embassies. What I'm saying is I share the president's view that probably my expectation was they were going to go after our embassies. A new ABC News Ipsos poll finds the majority of Americans, 56%, disapprove of President Trump's handling of Iran. 43% approve. Only 25% of those surveyed report feeling safer after the strike. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, New York. All right, it is 5:45. Top New England Patriots wide receiver Julian Edelman is being charged with vandalism. He was taken into custody in Beverly Hills Saturday night after he jumped on the hood of a car. A 33-year-old left damage and was arrested for vandalism and then released. He's expected to appear in court on April 13th. Edelman was named most valuable player in last year's Super Bowl. The Patriots have not commented on his arrest. The Australian government is using helicopters and airplanes to help get food to 
starving animals displaced by the country's wildfires. They dropped more than 4,000 pounds of carrots and sweet potatoes to colonies of wallabies. The brush-tailed rock wallabies are already endangered and officials are afraid the fires could hurt their survival. More than a billion animals are estimated to have been killed. Most of the fires are now under control. Total evacuation has been issued in the Philippines after a volcano began spewing ash miles into the air. The tall volcano began erupting on Sunday near the capital city of Manila. The, this morning, the streams of lava are beginning to gush out of the volcano. Officials have raised the alert level saying an explosive eruption could happen in the coming hours or days. More than 450,000 people are being evacuated with the help of the Red Cross. Another volcano in the Galapagos Islands is also erupting. Lava could be seen spilling out of the La Cumbre volcano, causing the area to be on high alert. It's on the Fernandina Island, which is home to unique animals like iguanas, penguins, and others. The Galapagos National Park says they're continuing to monitor the environmental effects of the eruption. Back here at home, we want to toss things over to Todd Clausen for a check of our Monday forecast. And after a very wet weekend, we finally get a little bit of an opportunity today and tomorrow to dry out before some more heavy rainfall heads our way by the end of the week. So that's the good news for your morning drive as you're not going to be dealing with any significant rain. There could be a little patchy drizzle, especially in some northern locations. Uh, but otherwise, just that damp feel and a lot of clouds out there currently across the area in these clouds. And they will be present through a good chunk of the day today. I do think they'll start to thin a little bit as we get into the afternoon and evening hours, but we're never going to completely get rid of the clouds. But we don't have to deal with any heavy or showers or snow showers. They are all going to uh, stay to the north. I will point out, though, uh, the county is bordering uh, the state line, so it does include the toll road. There is a winter weather advisory this morning, so if you're getting on the road and heading in that direction, just know when you get to extreme northern Indiana, you could run into some minor issues. But here in central Indiana, the temperatures are above freezing anywhere you go, so you shouldn't really have to worry about any slick spots on the roadways. 40 in Bloomington right now. It's 39 in Indy, 37 as you work your way up. U.S. 31 through Tipton, Kokomo, and into the Peru area and beyond. And as the day goes on, the skies will start to brighten just a little bit, but while the clouds are in place this morning, you notice the temperatures really don't do a whole lot, only about 38 degrees by the time we get to the noon hour as those clouds thin, though, and the temperatures should take a pretty good jump forward and will eventually climb up into the mid-40s here for your afternoon highs. A full 10 degrees above normal. It won't quite feel like that, though, with more in the way of clouds than sunshine, uh, but better than the normal 35 that we typically see this time of year. Fast forward to tomorrow morning. You'll be waking up to temperatures once again, very similar to what we're seeing right now, right around 40 degrees. The difference is tomorrow a little more in the way of sunshine, and that's going to allow the temperatures to get back up into the 50s. So this is a pretty mild week of weather, considering it's the middle of January, as every day this entire month, or this entire week rather, is going to be above normal as far as high temperatures go. It's not until probably Sunday next week that we start to see some more winter-like weather make its way into the area. But I want to focus right now on Friday into Saturday. Wednesday, there's the chance of some minor showers, probably not enough to aggravate any flooding situation across the area. But the storm system Friday into Saturday is going to be a bigger one. It starts as a brief wintry mix. I wouldn't at this point be too concerned about the wintry mix because it's going to go over to rain very quickly as the system brings in some mild air. By the time we get to Friday afternoon, we're probably talking mid to upper 50s for your high temperature, and that's going to continue into Saturday. But the rain gets heavy Friday into Saturday, and that's the issue. It's going to be the rainfall and the flooding potential that we run into. So let me fast forward on TrueCast here to Friday morning for you. Since we're already dealing with flooding and there's still a lot of flood warnings out there, I just want to kind of jump ahead in the forecast to prepare you in case you live in one of these areas uh, that is a little flood prone. Here's that brief wintry mix as things start off, but then we go over to all rain as we work our way into uh, the morning hours on Saturday. Maybe ends as a little bit of a brief wintry mix once again, but temperatures will be still well above freezing. So even if you see a few snowflakes, we are not going to be worried about any real issues as far as the wintry weather, but there will be the potential for another one to two inches of rain by the time we get to Saturday afternoon. And again, that's what's going to aggravate the flooding situation. So the good news in this forecast is the temperatures remain above uh, normal throughout much of the week. It's not again until Sunday that we get back below the average high of 35. Unfortunately, there's just not a ton of sunshine in the forecast this week. The best chance of seeing it will be
will be on Thursday with a high of 42 degrees. Todd, thank you. Here's a look right now. Your commute as you're heading in from the northwest side, traveling southbound on I-65 from I-865 to I-70 at the north split, a 17-minute drive, so no delays. We're continuing to monitor any delays due to a vehicle fire on the southwest side right now, so let's take a live look near I-465 and Man Road. You can see here everything is traveling up to speed, so no delays at this hour for your morning drive. Tesla is making history once again. Elon Musk's company is now the most valuable, valuable U.S. automaker ever. At last check, Tesla shares had a market value of $86.5 billion. That beats the company's record high of just more than $76 billion in 1999. They still have a long way to go to become the most valuable in the world. Toyota's market value is about $228 billion and Volkswagen stands at $100 billion. On RTV6, we're getting ready for the Oscar nominations in a few hours. The nominations for the 92nd Academy Awards will be announced on Good Morning America. The announcement will start this morning at 818. For the second year in a row, the show will not have a host. The ceremony will be held February 9th. You can watch it right here on RTV6. Coffee is a good way to wake up in the morning, and now it's also a fashion statement. After the break, how one company is using grounds to make sunglasses. We'll be right back. Ask your doctor about Jardians. A business in Ukraine called Okus is using coffee grounds to make eco-friendly sunglasses. They say it takes seven days to prepare the grounds to make the glasses. It takes enough coffee grounds from one cup of espresso to make a pair. The lenses are made from recycled cotton. The company says most of their customers are from countries like the U.S., Australia, and Japan. I want to see yeah. what they look like on. I know. Oh, well, <laughs> all right. Well, the good news is you probably won't need your sunglasses today, Todd. Yeah, you know, the best chance will be later on this afternoon. The clouds may thin a little bit, but yeah, you definitely don't need to carry the sunglasses around uh, with you the entire day today. Radar is quiet, though. That is nice for our morning commute and needed here across the area after all the rainfall Friday into Saturday. And temperatures, while they're on the cool side, they are above normal and above freezing. That's key with some moisture out there on the roadway still. 41 in Muncie right now. 38 in Indianapolis throughout the day today. Mostly cloudy skies, but mainly dry. There's just a small chance this morning in northern locations of a little bit of patchy drizzle. And as the clouds thin this afternoon, we'll eventually see our high temperature climb up to right around 46 degrees. The time now is 5.56. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on our TV6. Stay with us. We'll be back here in just a few minutes.